In this episode of Locked On Capitals, I am joined by Richard Blosser of the Grit and Barrett podcast, and we're going to talk about the Washington Capitals, the netminding situation. Before we go outside of the organization and seek a netminder, do we have someone in-house? Plus, we'll talk about everything else to do with the Hershey Bears. We'll talk about that on this edition of Locked On Capitals. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen or view of the day. Yes, this podcast is also available on video form. So go ahead and check that out. My name is Dan Holmey. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at LockedOnCaps. So in this edition, I am joined by Richard Blosser of the Grit and Barrett podcast. Richard, welcome to the program. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for having me on. I'm saying your last name correctly, isn't that? It's Blosser. Is that correct? That is correct. You said it cold start, ladies and gentlemen. I know there's certain uh, pronunciations sometimes I, I didn't want to make sure I wasn't saying it wrong. So first of all, welcome into the show. So um, the Hershey Bears season uh, ended a little bit sooner than they wanted it to, a lot like the Washington Capitals. Um, so what was your take on the Hershey Bears season this year? Um, I mean, ultimately, you can't be too upset about it. Uh, they went on to a Calder Cup once again. It seems like this team has a pedigree of just going to the Calder Cup all the time. Uh, Tell us a little bit about the Hershey Bears uh, past season. Past season was two halves. Uh, The first half of the season, um, the Bears were really good offensively, had a lot of talent there. We were expecting Connor McMichael to be sent down by Washington, but the Capitals had other plans and seemed really, really, Really like him. Um, we had um, former uh, New York Islander Matt Molson with us. Axel Janssen Fialbi was having a real breakout season this year, really developing a good sniping touch and great speed. And at one point, the Bears were sitting atop of the Atlantic Division, or at least within the top two, the upper upper echelon with the Springfield Thunderbirds and Charlotte Chen. After the Super Bowl, things just fell off. Um, Washington's injuries started piling piling up. Um, injuries with the Bears themselves started, and the offense just completely – there was no scoring depth with the team. Each of ECHL players, Marcus Fella, Christopher Down – Christopher Brown, Drake Remshaw, and for your audience, the ECHL, think of it like the double A of the Mm -hmm. hockey world and the American triple A. So we were starting talent that sort of wasn't supposed to be in the position that, that they were. And the second half of the season was very travel heavy, which tends to be the Bears MO during the month of March. And we just ran into too many good teams. And this team just sputtered across the finish line when they were eliminated by the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Baby Penguins farm club of the Pittsburgh Penguins in overtime by Alex Nylander. So um, it was, it was sort of a descent and, and train wreck at the end, at the end of the season it was as a fan it was very frustrating and very aggravating to watch it became very boring hockey to watch and i was part of me as harsh as this may sound i was sort of glad to see it over just because it was not fun to watch if you listen to my podcast i was getting angry every week to the point where let's start the season 
start the season over next year. So it was a very rough season this year for the Hershey Bears. When you're an organization that has 11 Calder Cups and 26 final visits, and you're considered New York Yankees, again with the baseball reference, when you're the New York Yankee League, you have very, very high standards. The Hershey Bears do, and they were just nowhere near met this season. Yeah, it's kind of an awkward position, you know, as being a Capitals fan. And, um, you know, I'm a fan of all the affiliates. I'm a a fan of the the Bears and the Stingrays as well. But it kind of has to put the Bears in an awkward position, you know, that when a big player for the Capitals comes out, well, then, you know, nine times out of ten, they got to call someone out of Hershey. And, uh, you know, when the Bears, you know, are headed to the playoffs, that means even pulling a player that was probably slated to be on the playoff team to play on the Capitals. And I know that these... uh, um, AHL affiliate and ECH affiliates, their their job is to kind of to fulfill the needs of the Capitals, but it has to kind of put the Bears uh, in a tough spot, you know, because, you know, when you look at some of the injuries that the Capitals faced uh, as being covering the Bears primarily, what is the frustration for you um, when you hear that there's an injury on the Capitals and then they have to pluck someone out of the Bears lineup to play for the Capitals? Well, it's, it was more of the just, it was always with the Capitals, it was always something. If it wasn't Oshie, it was Wilson. If it wasn't Wilson, it was Haglin. If it wasn't Haglin, it was insert somebody else here. Oh, I think Ovechkin missed some time this year. Um, it, it's just at the drop of a hat. Our coach, Scott Allen, brought up at one point when they were, when we were doing the Canadian road trip, in March, they had a three o'clock game in Laval, Quebec, which the Rocket are the affiliate of the, the Montreal Canadiens. Mm-hmm. They had a three o'clock game, and at one thirty, Scott Allen was told, "Hey, set this player aside. Washington might need him for a sun for a Sunday night game." And Allen had to swap a lot of his lineup on the fly. I mean, we the, the mm-hmm. benefit of having Hershey and DC so close to each other is that um, you could have, like for example, tweak something at morning skate at eleven thirty. Hey, we need somebody by five o'clock. You let say Shane Gersich know. Hey, we need you in DC. Pack your stuff. You're down I ninety five, and you're down in uh, DC by three thirty. If you leave around twelve thirty traffic mm-hmm. pending so it's good to have something like that. it it can also mean at the drop of a hat you're going to lose a player um, because of either injury or whatever something happens but this year it just seemed almost every day or every tuesday or wednesday we were fearing the injury rep- because who's going to get called up next at one point mm-hmm. we almost felt like we didn't have anybody yeah, I mean, every time I hear that, I, I'm thinking, well, it's going to be exciting for the Capitals to see this uh, Bears player into the lineup. And you saw a lot of them throughout this last season. You saw Leeson and Protus and um, uh, Hendricks LaPierre, which I know he spent most of his time on juniors. But um, I think that he's probably most likely going to be slated for the Bears next season. But uh, again, I can kind of relate. You know, I'm thinking, well, the Bears are probably in a tough spot right now. But uh, just taking a look at uh, the Hershey Bears, they definitely do have um, a pedigree, like I talked about earlier in the show, of winning uh, Calder Cups. Um, so the Hershey Bears uh, went have been to the Calder Cup 69 times, and they've won 11 Calder Cups, uh, according to my records here. Well, explain that uh, phenomenon a little bit to, to someone, you know, the Washington Capitals out there. I think that maybe a lot of the Capitals fans don't know that. Um, they just have this uh, illustrious long history. If you look over uh, time there, L- tell us a little bit about the Hershey Bears, just really great uh, winning streak, so to speak, uh, for the Calder Cup. Yeah, the Bears, uh, as you said, have won 11 of them. The next closest team to us, I think, is only won uh, seven, I think, is the Rochester Americans. Uh, it's just because so long we're going to be celebrating our 85th season and we are the longest running consistently team uh team in the american hockey league 
when you say when you think a team's been around for 85 years and you say that in the NHL, you instantly you think of the original six teams, Chicago, Boston, Montreal. So the Bears have that mm-hmm. pedigree of being around since like the 1930s. Um, the Bears have just always been able to to really um, just find just find talent, regardless of whoever they've been affiliated with throughout throughout the years. And um, it just it, it's kind of hard to explain the phenomenon when you have a team that's just been around for so long because it's not just. Uh, in the 80s or the 90s, like say, like an NHL team like the Devils and the Islanders, it's the Bears have won a Calder Cup in almost every decade, with the exception of the 2010s, unless you want to count 2009, 2000. Um, since the 1938, I, th- no, I think 1938 or 1939 was our first. So, mm-hmm. um, it's just the Bears just being around for for so long, and and consistently, as you said we've made the playoffs six nine times throughout the year. We've made six visits to the Calder Cup Finals, um, and you know won twenty six conference championships as well. So the Capitals have a really good pedigree affiliate to them as well. From what I've seen and fans don't even really believe that the Bears even exist, even know that their affiliate exists. They think a lot of their great players just tend to grow on trees. And while, yes, the likes of an Ovechkin and Backstrom haven't come through Hershey, um, a lot of other uh, current Capitals favorites has. John Carlson, Carl Alsner, Tom Wilson, Brandon Holtby, Karloff, um, Aaron Volpe. Um, I'm just listing off the ones that I can say at the top of my head have all graduated or come through the brotherhood, as I've said, from Hershey on their way up to D.C. Even VTech Vanity, all three, South Carolina, Hershey, love players graduate up um, up to up to Washington, and at least we just uh, wished um, forward wise that would happen a little bit more often because we know we get a lot of defensemen, and we just wish there'd be a little bit more forwards that would be able to go up as well. Um, the last uh, forward that we've known of, um, the last crop was. Uh, Jacob Verana that went up, and uh, we know what happened to him. To get uh, really good with DC because I've just seen a lot of forwards come up and only to end up to be traded. Yeah, I mean, and uh, I mean, that's what I like you were talking about. I think that maybe a lot of Capitals fans don't know uh, what a great team it is. And uh, I mean, the record kind of speaks for themselves. I know that the the Bears didn't get the result that they wanted to this year, a lot like the Washington Capitals. So after the break, we will continue to talk uh, to Richard about the net mining situation. And do they have someone in house that they could go to with? But first, BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all of the latest sports developments, news and odds, including this year's basketball championship matchups, the NHL Hockey Conference Finals, Major League Baseball, and of course, the latest fighting news from MMA to UFC boxing. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. All right, so once again, we are joined by Richard Blosser of the Grit and Barrett podcast. Welcome to the show once again. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. And Yeah, you bet. So in this next segment here, it is my belief that the Washington Capitals, you know, I think that they're going to have to pick out who the number two netminder is. I think that ultimately they'll go outside of the organization and get that one veteran netminder. So, the, you know, the two netminders they have on the team right now are two RFAs. Uh, They have Vanacek and Sam Sonoff. I think that ultimately 
Uh, they may move on from one, if not both of them. I know that seems unlikely since they have the rights to both those netminders. But let's take a look at the AHL Hershey Bears and what they have in net. And I've kind of said who my favorites are about uh, on the Bears on who I think uh, would be a great netminder. If you were to pick one netminder on the Bears right now that you think is ready for prime time to be at least a number two netminder for the Capitals, who comes to mind for you? The top of my head, it would have to be Zach Fucali. Um, the former Montreal Canadien um, has shown um, good promise. Um, he was a bit up and down this season, but the second half of the season, like I said, in front of him. So a lot wasn't really his fault, as harsh as I was, and the fan base was on him. Um, but it seems like Fukali right now would seem the uh, the more likely or option to get called up. Now, you do have Phoenix Copley, a man who's been in the organization for at least six or seven years. Now, uh, not a friend of the podcast, the Calder Farm Stand, which is a pure AHL uh, podcast, brought up a really good point last year um, heading into the season that Copley – is going to be turning 30 this year and um, is pretty much heading on the backside of goaltender wise. And if it's not now, the Capitals are question would be if, when, or, or ever, as much as they like Sammy and VTech and now Fukali might actually get the call before him. So Phoenix Copley is a good option. They are familiar with him in the organization it just wonder i just wondered with him is that has his time passed do anything with him another person you have in the organization and i'm sure you'd bring this up as well is hunter shepherd um, but he is basically too young to sprout at this point spending a lot of time in the south carolina stingrays he is slated likely to be the main number two b in Hershey this this season. I mean, Washington and Hershey have always had good goaltending prospects go up and through. Simeon Varlamov, um, Philip Grubauer, Sammy, uh, Vita, um, now Zach Fukali. The goalie pipeline between Hershey is very, very, very rich. When you take a look at some teams like a Toronto or a Carolina who's shipped off one of their younger goaltenders, which I think they shouldn't have, and Alex Nedeljkovic, you see a lot of goalies and organizations that either get buried or traded. And unlike the forward situation, the Capitals have been faithful to their goaltenders. So Fukali has a slight edge over Phoenix Copley, although who I think he wasn't expiring this year. You, it's, it's a toss-up between those two, but they've already put money into Fukali to stick around for another year. I think he has a slight edge over Phoenix. One could get called up. Yeah, and I'm talking about that in tomorrow's podcast. I'm kind of breaking down my thoughts on the different netminders, and that's my thought on Phoenix Copley is I think that you know, his time has kind of come and gone. Kind of a high watermark of his career was to be on that 2018 uh, Stanley Cup roster. I know he didn't get uh, playing playing time in there, but um, kind of one of the things I, hi I highlight about Phoenix Copley is he's been around. He's been there. He's done that. And, uh, you know, to a certain extent, I kind of feel sorry for these guys that have toiled and they've really put in their time. And then you got to think to a certain point, they get to an age and they're like, what are we doing here? You know, I don't mean to speak uh, disparagingly of the AHL affiliates, but I mean, I think that ultimately all those players, their dream is to play on an NHL team. And uh, I think, you know, for me, in my opinion, I think that Phoenix Copley's time has kind of come and gone. I, I mean, I think with the Capitals, um, I think if there's an opportunity for him outside of the Capitals organization, I'm talking about Copley as a person. You know, we don't have to hate these players because they want to go on and do bigger and better things. I, you know, I wish him nothing but the best. But I think that ultimately that the Capitals... Um, Netminding pipeline is pretty full right now. I mean, we have, like we talked about, Fukali and uh, Hunter Shepard, and then, you know, they also signed Clay Stevenson. And, um, 
you know, which I know he isn't ready for prime time yet, but I mean, there are a lot of players that are coming up uh, in the organization. So I think that ultimately for me, I think that, you know, a a lot like you, I think it's Fukali. I think that uh, he could most likely take that spot as the number two netminder. I don't know if the Capitals will ultimately go in that direction. Part of me, something tells me that they're going to end up going with Sam Sonoff again just because they drafted him higher. And, you know, the book on him is that he's a better athlete and all that kind of thing. I guess it will remain to be seen here. So right after the break here, we are going to talk about the Washington Capitals season and um, what um, Richard's thoughts are on that, um, what players might get called up, what players uh, from Hershey might fit into this lineup. All right. But first, we have an important favor to ask you. We've put together a survey so we can learn more about listeners like you and make your favorite Locked On podcast even better. This is your opportunity to tell us what you like and what you don't like about Locked On Podcasts. Go to LockedOnPodcasts.com slash survey right now to get started. It won't take very long, and everyone that completes a survey can qualify for a chance to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards. To take our audience survey, go to LockedOnPodcasts.com slash survey. Thanks for your help. All right, welcome back once again to this special crossover uh, edition, or not crossover, kind of a crossover edition, but a Locked On Capitals podcast with Richard Blosser of the Grit and Barrett podcast as we're talking Hershey Bears, we're talking Washington Capitals. So first of all, why don't you tell everyone where we can find your podcast? Well, the 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 Grit and Barrett podcast can be found on all uh, podcast platforms. I'm a part of hockey podcast. Um, you can find the Grit and Barrett podcast on Twitter. That is Grit, G R I T, what most coaches love. And Bear, B E A R I T, uh, P1 on, on Twitter. And check any other podcast platforms, um, as you see right there at the bottom there, to where um, just went a bit of a break. Uh, right now due to um, moving and getting married myself but now we are we're going to be back we're going to put out new episodes weekly i just started a mini series of mine called game over which is where we say goodbye to each and every nhl team or at least over the next month or two um just do what i call an exit survey podcast with uh with wrong with teams this past year. We just, tomorrow's gonna drop the first one, which deals with the Dallas Stars. We're gonna deal with uh, Les Inhabitants and other teams for about the month or so with, to where we are top champions. So the, we will get to the Capitals. Eventually they're Caps fans. I'm not gonna do all 31 teams, but I'm gonna probably try and get about nine or 10 of them. And But we will get into more Bears content over the summer with schedule releases and player player signings. It's just over the summer is when I like to stretch my creativity wings, uh, try some new things as we sit, as we hit the proverbial downtime of the summer months. Yeah, so before we started recording here, we were talking about uh, Tom Wilson's injury and the fact that um, they may need to call up someone from the Bears. Um, how it's what they're saying, all the reports are, is that, you know, kind of best case scenario, Tom Wilson might return around December. So if Tom Wilson is missing any extended period of time, it stands to reason the Capitals will most likely need to call up someone from the Hershey Bears. Um, you said that you had mentioned it in your podcast. Who do you believe? that the capital should call up in Tom Wilson's absence is the person that you're going to name is he of a physical stature. Is he going to fill the role of a Tom Wilson? Cause let's face it, Tom Wilson brings a, a lot. He brings a physical game and he is also a 20 plus goal scorer. So not just this kind of tough guy that some people perceive him to be. He is that and more. Who do you have in mind to fill that role? Um, be big Beck Malenstein or Malenstein. I've heard I've heard both ways. Um, if you want a player that is more like Tom Wilson, Beck is the guy to go. He is a big right winger. Um, he's he's not as fast as Wilson, but he his style. A guy who's not afraid to go into the boards. Who's not afraid. And when 
win puck battles. He has a bit of a scoring scoring touch to him. But when I think of Tom Wilson, I think of to um, it's sort of like an, an all purpose player, a guy who can a guy who can shoot, a guy who can pass, a guy who can rough up the body a bit, uh, or or can be a defensive winger, which appears to have really um, grown in the NHL over the past five or six years, as most wingers in the past weren't really known for their defense. Now the term two-way winger has sort of become um, a thing. And um, I, I think Beck has that ability to to play a good 200-foot game. Um is definitely something the Capitals would need. Now, is back an immediate bottom uh, middle six forward? Um, no, but he's definitely a guy, if you're looking for a big, beefy presence to put out, out there to win the role of what Tom Wilson did, then Beck Mal, you you'd want to go for. Yeah, and uh, he is no stranger to this team. He's been called up before, um, and I, I think a grill a great option for the Washington Capitals. We had talked about uh, before um, too is that uh, Connor McMichael uh, ended up spending a lot more time on this team than I think that a lot of people thought he would. Um, he saw a little bit of limited playing time uh, throughout the season, and kind of one of the things that I'd question about McMichael is would he have been better served to spend more time with the Bears where he could have had, you know, presumably more time in the lineup. Um, because, I mean, I know that he is getting some real world big experience on the big team with uh, Alex Ovechkin. Um, and especially since I think Lars Eller's um, career with the Capitals is a bit in question. I know that Tom Wilson's injury uh, kind of draws that into question a little bit. But do you think that the the for Connor McMichael, he would have been better served to spend more time in Hershey this past season? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, I am in call ups, and he is a. The expectations for him are very high, but he needed a season to proverbially uh, marinate a bit more to get playing time and not just sitting in the upper seats in the Capital One. You are right. He did experience. He got NHL games. He got to see the the speed of the NHL. But in terms of actual playing time and getting into a a consistent rhythm and system, um, I think he does need a year. In and part of me hopes that this year he can get a bit more down there. Caps are are so in love with him that they're just going to keep him up. You know. You know just in case, just in case an in first round player, we have to do something with them, right? You know, have him, have him down here or she. We're not going to get him injured. We promise. Um, but I, I think for development wise, if you want this to get his legs underneath him and have him consistent playing time, um, because the Capitals, he he plays primarily left wing, left wing center. I mean, the Capitals have a lot of those in your organization. You have a lot of big money guys that you've signed to. At bottom six, a lot of room for McMichael unless there is – there's and again, last season, there was a lot of them. Um, but he is more suited to just give – let him have us have him just for one year. And if you like, hey, we need him for, for a uh, West Coast, road trip all right ship him out on the first plane then um but i think for his development and i've seen this happen in other organizations it can stunt his development if he sits for too long or is just constantly up and down between the two organizations i mean that's what hershey's for we want to see Connor mcmichael down here and he can get some good some more consistent playing time and really develop into the player that the Capitals wanted want him to be when he's drafted because he's not doing that, only playing 10 or 15 NHL games. Yeah, and, uh, you know, one of the things that Braden Holtby talked about one time when he was talking about the AHL is the difference 
uh, between the AHL and the NHL is razor fine. I think that, you know, some people think that we're talking about a single A affiliate baseball team out here that, uh, you know, it is, uh, you know, it, they're, it's um, a competitive league and it's professional hockey at the end of the day. All right. So thank you for making Locked On Capitals your first listen every day. Now make your second listen Locked On NHL. Locked On NHL covers the playoffs like no other. Hear the latest news and opinions from our local experts every Monday through Friday. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. So, Richard, once again, thank you for joining us on this edition of Locked On Capitals. Just a wealth of knowledge uh, on the Hershey Bears, and I'm hoping for bigger and better things next season with the Capitals and with the Hershey Bears, and we hope to have you on the show again soon. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for having me on, and uh, let's do this again once the season um, season gets closer. Go Bears and go Capitals as well. Thank you very much. All right. So once again, thank you for joining us on this edition of Locked On Capitals.